Do you remember the last time that you felt uncomfortable somewhere? Maybe it was at the office party you attended with your spouse, or maybe at your child's back-to-school night, or perhaps it was at the uh, new job, or maybe it was because you attended a new school. Sometimes you just feel a little bit uncomfortable. And when we feel that way, it's often because we don't know the people who are around us, or maybe we are just not sure of our role or our place or our responsibility. And I think it's probably pretty correct to say or right to say, most of us at times have felt left out, alone, or unwelcomed. And it's not a good feeling when we feel that way. It's kind of a lousy feeling, if you will. Lousy, so lousy, in fact, that we'll probably go to great lengths to avoid those feelings and to ever really being the outsider. I think the first time I distinctly felt like an outsider was when I went to college in Texas. Before moving day, I had not thought about how different it might be from what I had known. Really, how could it be different? I was going to a Lutheran college, I grew up Lutheran, and I even knew some people who were already attending school there. It should seem familiar, right? It should seem familiar. But the day I moved in, I realized I was not in Indiana anymore. (laughs) It all began as I was carrying the boxes from my car into my residence hall for the year, Clifton Hall. And I was wearing sandals. It was August, you know, it was hot outside. But I noticed all these other young women, like their parents, were wearing cowboy boots, which were popular in Texas. And in the cafeteria, there was differences in the food that I had not anticipated or had not even seen. People were excited when the dining hall offered things like nachos topped with jalapeno peppers at dinner. I have to admit, I had never seen or eaten a nacho before I moved to Texas. There were no Taco Bells in Michigan City, Indiana. There was an entree that was very popular called chicken fried steak. It had white gravy poured on top of it. I had never seen or eaten it before, and they served it often. The sports were different, too. I came from the Hoosier State where basketball was king, And guess what? In Texas, it's all about football. And finally, I learned it was not Texans who had an accent. It was us snowbirds who had come south for college, and and we were sometimes reminded that we had some odd regional accents and ways of saying things. Well, all these things, at least initially, reminded me that I was an outsider, And in the beginning, there were times I felt a little awkward because of that. But I do have to say that over my college career, I really learned to kind of embrace those differences, and also Texas began or felt like home to me. But while I was on my internship while being a student pastor, I felt like an outsider for different reasons. As Pastor Lauren and Pastor Alex can attest, when a seminarian goes on internship, there is always an internship committee that meets with them from the congregation. And that committee serves to uh, support them, encourage us as we're we're serving, give feedback, um, evaluate what we are doing in ministry. And that committee serves an important role in helping the intern grow into the role of pastor as they work in the congregation. Well, I started my internship about September 1st, and probably about halfway through that first month of September, I met with my internship committee for the first time. And the chair of the committee, her name was Susie, uh, began the meeting by having everyone introduce themselves and share why they wanted to be a part of that committee. Pretty normal things to do when you're forming a committee, right? And the process went, as you might expect, until it came to Tim. And Tim introduced himself and then proceeded to tell me, in all honesty, he said, I don't think women should be pastors. (laughs) 
And to tell you the truth, I didn't really know what to do with that information. I felt like I was starting this internship with a mark against me with nothing I could do about that mark, right? I was a woman. I felt like maybe I should not be at that congregation. I felt unwanted and on the outside in that moment. And you know, this was a feeling I was not expecting to have so early in my internship. I thought it might come, but not so early. Right as we were starting, it just felt like, wow. <laughs> Well, I did the only thing I could think to do in that moment, and I acknowledged what he said and said, thank you for sharing that, and the meeting went on. <laughs> well, being on the outside in that moment was different than the awkwardness I felt in Texas. At that moment on my internship, I felt judged and rejected and unwanted, like I had intruded into a place that I should never have gone. You know, it's like I was intruding in. And I have to say, it's not fun feeling like an outsider at times. Well, in today's gospel lesson, we hear the story about a woman who is considered an outsider who comes to Jesus for help. It all begins as Jesus is teaching and instructing his disciples and the crowds on what really defiles a person. It's not what they eat, but what they do and what comes from their hearts, he says. And after Jesus finishes his teaching, he then goes on his way and comes to the area known as Tyre and Sidon. And as soon as he gets there, a Canaanite woman, a Gentile woman, comes pushing in amongst the gathered believers, begging for her daughter to be healed. Earlier, Jesus had made it clear that his mission was to the lost sheep of Israel, and she's not part of that household. And he's in Gentile country, and she's a Gentile. What is more startling, this woman even has the, you might say, guts to talk to him who he is a religious leader. He is male. And she probably shouldn't have been doing that. Well, the, the disciples urged Jesus to get rid of her. They're annoyed with her. And they seem to function here like the secret police, if you will, or the secret service, kind of protecting Jesus from unwarranted intrusions. Yet she is determined to intrude. And her daughter is ill, and she's just not going to take no for an answer. Well, Jesus does this thing where he tries to brush her off with a slogan about not giving the children's breads to the dogs. By the way, dog was a favorite term for a Gentile like her. But with that certain amount of audacity, she engages him in a debate saying, but even the dogs are allowed to eat the crumbs from the master's table. In essence, she's saying, I will take whatever is left over because her hope lies in Jesus. She has nothing else and she trusts that the crumbs will be enough to heal her daughter. She really gets to Jesus, for then he exclaims in amazement, how great is your faith, and her daughter, we're told, is instantly heal, healed. A couple of Sundays ago, Pastor Alex preached, and we heard about the abundance of God's compassion, about the abundance of Jesus' compassion, so much so that 5,000 people were fed. Today, we are once again witnessing the overflowing of compassion. The love of Jesus and the healing power he has is not just for those who are inside, but also for those who are on the outside. His healing power is meant to overflow even to the outsider, even to the Canaanite woman, and really to all people and to all nations. And that's where we'll end up at the end of Matthew's gospel, make disciples of all nations sharing that love. This story follows in Matthew a whole series of perplexing parables. But here I think we have a living parable, if you will, about the compassion of Jesus that reaches out beyond the pre-sent boundaries. But here we also have a parable about the church, about how insiders sometimes react when the good news of Jesus is also good news for outsiders. The disciples, they initially just push her aside. They do not want to deal with her. 
but I think they learned a lot that day. I think their hearts were created anew by what they saw and by what Jesus did for that woman. I think they witnessed compassion as Jesus tore down the boundaries that the disciples had set, and that made them start to think about things, I think, a little bit differently in the very end. Do you know this? Statistics tell us that people feel like an outsider, sometimes I should say, feel like an outsider at the church they attend. Did you know that? It's kind of an interesting statistic. Each week, the statistics say, there are a certain number of people sitting in the pews at a congregation who are listening to the sermon, singing the words of the hymns, going through the prayers and the liturgy, who maybe just feel a little bit on the outside. I think that might be hard for us to imagine, but it's true there are people who maybe don't feel particularly comfortable at church. And here's what I know. I know what no one from our congregation or a congregation would set out to make someone feel unwelcome. I hope you know that too. I think it just happens. Pastor Lauren started his call as senior pastor on March 13th this year. And he's been here a little over five months. Can you re- believe that? Has it gone quickly? It seems it has to me. Well, as a staff, we knew that part of our responsibility was to bring him on board to the ministry of Good Shepherd because he was the new guy. He was the outsider. He said that to a lot to us as a staff. I'm the new guy. I'm the outsider. Help me out here, folks. And one of the things the staff did was develop an onboarding checklist to help with the process. And I want to tell you that we did complete that list. We did bring him on board. And I think things went smoothly over time. But occasionally, I have to tell you, there's some unintentional failure. For example, this summer we were discussing the church calendar and the practice is for the staff and Good Shepherd groups to get their things to populate the calendar uh, by the end of July. So we can have all that kind of set up by the end of July. So then the calendar is opened up to outside groups such as AA or Al-Anon or other groups who want to use our building so they can uh, reserve rooms to use the building as needed. At one staff meeting, we were sitting there, we were talking about things, and all of a sudden we realized we had failed to let Pastor Lauren know about this practice. And it wasn't a big deal, but it would have been helpful for him to know how we did these things around Good Shepherd. Well, fortunately, there was a lot of knowing smiles. There was apologies. There was forgiveness. There were grace when that happened. But in many ways, Pastor Lauren is still getting to know Good Shepherd and really all the ins and outs of the congregation. Now, you may be wondering, why am I telling you this story? because I think it illustrates how quickly we can forget a new person or a person who has attended a church for a while may not always feel totally comfortable in the congregation we call home. They may not know everything. And I think it also illustrates how we are all encouraged to always help welcome everyone into our congregation. I know that sometimes that welcome means opening the boundaries that we have set in a big way and saying things like, all means all, and we really mean that. We want to welcome all people into our congregation. But other times, I think it might just mean walking across the aisle of the church, shaking a hand and introducing ourselves, saying something like, I don't remember meeting you before, I'm Pat. You know, it's just doing those small things. So we really are building up our community, our body of Christ, our family of God. Maybe it's even offering an invitation to somebody saying, hey, I'm involved with this Bible study. Maybe you would like to join too. It's all part of what we do as the family of God. And the other reason I mention this, because I know that this is the season in the church year, in the life of the church, that is, that the congregation may have many visitors. Families are sometimes, they've relocated, they've gotten back to school, and now they're trying to establish a new rhythm for their life, and sometimes that's attending church. 
So we need to be on the lookout for those who are visiting here among us. And I know there are individuals and couples who are maybe making life changes, and they too are looking for a place to connect, a place to belong, a church home, to, uh, a church home, a church family. I think bottom line, this gospel text reminds us to have hearts full of compassion for the outsider, to have hearts full of compassion so we can welcome all people into God's family. And here's my prayer for Good Shepherd, that our hearts are always broken open and filled with God's gracious love so we'll be a church that does not set up boundaries to keep people out. My prayer is that we will keep exploring ways to be welcoming and kind to all people and find creative ways to onboard and invite people into the ministry of Good Shepherd because there's much going on. And my prayer is that our doors are always wide open so nobody feels pushed aside or left out so all people know they are welcomed to the family of God as it occupies this space. Amen.